Yo, welcome. This is a video series in which I'll be showing you real life skate filming techniques that I've learned across the years and how I apply that to film clips in games like Session or Skater Excel. Uh, any game with a replay editor that really allows you to beef up your clips and f go a little bit more bonkers when filming, right? Um, I'm hoping that this series is going to make skate filming more accessible and easier to develop an intuition for, right? So uh, I'm going to be focusing on stuff like the logic behind the camera work, what the angles represent, where the emphasis is going and how to put emphasis on what you wish, right? So how to properly represent skateboarding in all its glory and intensity on screen through the camera work, right? So this particular video is focusing on filming with the fisheye and filming a stationary shot. So one-off tricks like gaps or handrails. And because that's what we're focusing on, the camera work, I'm going to have to put in a bit of a disclaimer here. We're not spending any time detailing the small uh, and basic functionalities of the replay editor, all right? So I'm taking for granted that you already have that down pat and if you need help with that, let me actually refer you to the great videos that are already out there uh, on channels such as Milky or Night Speeds or JL Nightmare. That's the one that helped me the most particularly. Uh, the way he explained it just made the most sense to me, but all of them are really, really good. And I encourage you to really learn how to use the replay editor and then come back to this if you want to push your filming and your understanding of skate filming further, right? That's what we're doing here. Uh, so, listen, let's get on into it. Let's uh, film a clip and let's question the filming, all right? Okay, so let's make a small list of things we need to keep in mind as a filmer, right? When preparing to film a trick. The first thing you need to keep in mind is that using a fisheye requires you to be physically close to the trick as it happens, all right? So you're gonna be right up in that danger zone where if the skater chokes and throws their board or if any other chaos ensues, you're at a very real risk of getting hit in the face with a board. Or worse, the camera could get hit, right? And the reason behind that is um, the fisheye lens makes everything bigger on screen. And we're not exaggerating for the fun of exaggerating here. We're trying to represent how intense it is to do this trick to the viewer, right? So making everything bigger is going to seem, make it seem very intense. It's going to accentuate the speed, the distance, the height. Everything is going to seem true to real life, right? That's the relationship between the viewer and the trick as it's happening. And it's the filmer's job with their camera and equipment and filming knowledge to be the bridge between those two elements. Now, the next really important point is do not zoom or do not play with the field of view when you're using a fisheye. Use the default or the natural field of view that the fisheye offers. Unless you're taking on purpose artistic liberties, which I encourage you to do, but do take knowledge of the basics and the logic behind it first. Right. So the idea here is if you zoom in, everything's going to be out of proportion. Everything's going to just stop making sense visually. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's what we're using right there. All right. Let's film that. Right. Let's take a look at it. Um, so the next thing that I want to mention is tied into session specifically. All right. There is a bug when you're in the replay editor and you're switching from a normal camera to a fisheye lens, right? So, like this. Camera, fisheye, your field of view will be messed up. This is the bug. Look at how the door seems to get taller in the middle and shrink around the edges of the screen. That's the bug. The field of view is a little bit zoomed in and it always does this. Trust me, if it feels too subtle for you, Take my word for it, all right? You want to fix this. So how do we fix it? Real simple. Exit the replay editor. Wait five seconds. Go right back in. Now when you go to that angle again, you can see it's as if we're further back, but that's because the field of view was reset. So now we can actually pan in, put our filmer here, and film our standard shot. This standard shot requires the filmer to just be there 
standing and not really do anything much except track the skater with the camera. So the way I go about it is I put in five keyframes. The first keyframe is right up against the start of the clip. As you see, this is the shot, keeping the skater to the side. Next, right up at the end of the clip. See, I moved my skater all the way to the end of the clip and I'm filming the shot that I want to keep at the end, right? That's the keyframe. The next keyframe, the three next ones are gonna be at the start of the trick, at the middle of the trick, and at the end of the trick. Now, here's what that's gonna look like. Keep the skater to one side of the screen and make sure you film the gap as well. That's the first keyframe. The next keyframe, remember when I was talking about that danger zone? Right up in here. So in the middle of the trick, right at the apex of height of the trick, that's where the middle of the trick is. And the end, the land, right? That's what we're getting. And keep the skater to the opposite side from where they started. And here's how that looks. Here we go. That is a standard shot where the filmer just stands there, keeps the camera at relatively shoulder height and just tracks the skater. Now, what elements are being used here? There's something that I call the whoosh, where the skater zooms across the screen from right to left during the trick, right? That's what conveys intensity. That's what conveys speed, uh, difficulty, height, right? But also how to make the viewer experience the trick more immersively, watch what the camera is doing here. As the skater is popping, camera goes up. Skater reaches the top of their trick, camera stops there. Skater's going down, camera's panning down, right? So the camera emulates the trick itself. And that's what makes an immersive shot. That's what drags the viewer in and makes them really experience it, makes them lift their shoulders and slump down when the trick happens, right? That's it. That's a basic shot with the whoosh. Those are two really important elements. And as you can see, these are just three keyframes. And in the next segment, we're gonna preserve the whoosh, but we're gonna tweak these keyframes to put emphasis on different parts of the trick, all right? We're gonna do that right now. Let's head on, head on over there right now. All right, we have our standard shot, looks like this. Let me remind you, the standard shot only implies that the filmer is standing there, they're not moving, and they're just tracking the skater with the camera work. Now, we're gonna start moving the filmer around. And we're gonna do that in one of two ways that I propose, but these are definitely not the only two ways, uh, just two good ways to start. So, we're gonna keep the keyframes exactly where they are, but we're gonna modify them. The two ways that I propose are pivoting to put emphasis on the spot itself or panning to put the emphasis on the trick, right? Let's start with the pivot. So the first thing you want to do. Yo, this is Haloof from editing. Allow me to use my omnipresence in this video to make a small but crucial correction. Haloof from recording jumped the gun a bit there and began explaining how to do a pivot shot before actually explaining what a pivot shot is. So to properly visualize the movement a filmer must do for a pivoting shot, imagine that there's an invisible point somewhere in between the skater and the filmer. Not under the skater, but between the two people. As the skater does their trick, the filmer sidesteps around this invisible point in the direction opposite to the skaters. Think of it as the movement of yin and yang around their center. They move together as one at the same time and around the same point. Now, let's not get too deep into that rabbit hole though. Back to the lesson. I'll be seeing you later. Is make sure that you have as much of the spot as possible in the shot, right? So usually you're gonna have to back away. Now we have back away, we're off to the side, the skater's to one side of the screen. This is the new keyframe, all right? Let's move on to the next one. Remember what I was talking about the danger zone? 
this is going to be the exception. We're going to pan away and we're going to make sure that we're keeping it at, a, at whatever height you, you so wish. I'm going to want to emphasize a little bit more the height of the trick, so I'm going to keep it low. And make sure you keep the entire spot in the shot and the skater center at the apex. So this is the new keyframe now. Next, we're still using the keyframe from last time. I'm going to modify it. I'm going to go all the way back here. Make sure, again, you're back enough to keep the entire spot in the shot. I'm keeping the top of the first set of stairs in the shot, as well as the skater to the side to preserve the whoosh effect, right? Now, let's see if this meshes well together. I don't like how it snaps to one side of the, to, to the top of the stairs. So let me just move this keyframe down a little bit, all right? Okay, that's what we want. All right, so now let's take a look at how it looks in real time. Good, good. As you can see, the spot looks so much bigger now. It looks like a massive ghetto bird over a massive double set. So this is what the filmer could have decided. All right, this shot, I'm going to film it this way because I want the double set to look amazing. And that's why would they, they would have opted for a pivoting shot where they stay a little bit further back but that's because the emphasis is on the spot. Let's look at a panning shot. Hey there. Told you I'd be seeing you later. Yet again, I've elected to interject here, since once again, Halufin recording accidentally omitted to explain a panning shot and just began explaining how to do it. A panning shot here is specifically referring to panning the camera to follow the trick from up close as it's happening. So we're really deep in that danger zone we were talking about earlier. The camera work for an up close panning shot like this requires the filmer to move almost identically to the trick, short of flipping the camera itself. Haloof over there does a good job of covering the details of this technique, so let's unlock his space time and allow him to continue. Enjoy the rest of the video as you won't be hearing from me again. But I'll be watching. Bye now. Again, we're keeping the same keyframes, but now we're doing the opposite. We're starting real close. All right, make sure, again, the skater is to the side of the screen. We want to preserve that a whoosh effect side of the screen and maybe we're gonna keep it low here so that it looks like they're jumping off something high now let's head on to the next keyframe in the middle of the trick this is where you want to really accentuate that danger zone I was telling you about get in there again middle of the trick middle of the screen and the last part the last keyframe we're gonna keep up with the skater and we're gonna follow them. Notice how we're closer to the skater now, right? I'm gonna opt to put the keyframe right around here. Whoopsie, let's get right back in there. There we go. And I'm gonna delete the extra keyframe. Now, let's see how this looks. It might be a little bit too close. I'd, I might have to adjust it. No, that was perfect. All right, so remember, this panning shot puts much more emphasis on the trick itself, right? So you can see that it's a double set. You can understand it. You see the start of it before and you see the end of it after. The bare minimum is communicated to understand that it's a double set. But if this was a crazier trick, something like big spin late flip, right? So now you're, you're panned in. You're putting it right in the viewer's face. Big spin, catch flip land everything is there in all its glory right you can film it in 60 frames per second 120 get that glorious slow-mo you know that's why you would opt for this shot rather than a pivoting shot right emphasis on the trick i'm going to put all of these at the end of the video so you can compare but remember i used the same keyframes and we're still having that whoosh effect right 
that's what gives intensity that's what gives action right so that was it let's head on over to the closing the outro and um really christen off this this entire series i think this was a good start let's go Alright, you made it to the end of the video. <laughs> Congrats, you know. You'll be thanking yourself for the patience and for the interest that you have in this. It's going to take you a long way. Uh, but I'm going to be thanking you though for sticking with me through this video. I'd agree with you if you said this was a lot of information. But as you can see, it is a very unique skill set. Uh, filming skating has to combine knowledge of the tricks themselves with cinematography nothing less because you're making your viewers experience something you're not just putting something on screen you're dragging people into the adventure with you right that's cinematography so um for the future of this series you know i have plans to make a video for filming long lens a video for filming lines with a with a fisheye but i'm hoping that it's going to grow a little bit more organically right so hit me up in the comments whatever comment section you find me in Reddit, YouTube, whatever, and tell me what you would like to see explained in this manner, and I will be happy to oblige. I've been doing this for a long time, and you can imagine how happy I am that we have games that allow us to do this now and put this skill set to good use. Um, but until then, until the next video, this is me signing off, wishing you patience for your practice, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>